Good morning, everybody. Happy Sunday and welcome to the All About Favor Word for Today. I am going to draw from the following scriptures from the Gospel of St. Mark, chapter 1, beginning at verse 21 down through verse 27, and also the Gospel of St. John, chapter 14, verse 12, 13, and 14. You can read those later on today at your leisure, but these scriptures are talking about the authority of Jesus. And from that, I glean that you need to know today that you too have authority. Now, just what is authority? The word authority means having the ability to subdue, meaning bring under your submission. Subdue means you having dominion and you have a lawful right to bring anything and enforce anything or anyone into obedience. Now, so I want to tell somebody today, you have a right to take back authority over your life. You have a God-given right to bring under submission, bring under your, your dominion, bring under your authority anything the enemy sends your way. Now, let's talk a little bit about being able to operate in that authority. That means you've got to start decreeing and declaring that a thing be done. And more importantly, you've got to have faith to believe that it will be done. Now, in this scripture, it's, a, it's something very important in this scripture that kind of, it puzzled me. And, and let me just go draw from the scripture here. It says a man with an unclean or an evil spirit was in the Lord's house. Now, think about this. Did you see that? A man with an unclean spirit went to church. In the Lord's house, on the Lord's day, in the presence of God's people. Now, don't miss this. I know you. some people don't like talking about this, but we got to understand, people of God, that there's some unclean spirits that get dressed up every Sunday and go to church. I know if I was inside the sanctuary, somebody will be saying amen to that. Let me just take a few minutes with this. Somebody might be thinking, Pastor KZ, what exactly is an unclean spirit. An unclean spirit is some, th let me give you some traits and characteristics of the unclean spirit. An unclean spirit interferes with worship service. Unclean spirits is somebody whose personality has been damaged to the extent that they are under satanic control. In other words, an unclean spirit is any spirit that's not in agreement with God. See, that's why you got to be careful and learn how to discern spirits. You know, you can't just go in the presence of everything. You ever went in the presence of someone or, and you felt uneasy or like your spirit didn't mix with them? It was, it was the spirit, the Holy Spirit in you giving you a red flag that something is wrong. Spirits recognize the spirits. Somebody got that. Now, don't be tricked. Don't be tricked because unclean spirits know how to shout. They know how to dance in the spirit. Unclean spirits know how to, quote unquote, appear holy. Can, can anybody understand where I'm going? See, you got to understand in this scripture lesson, the unclean spirit did something else. Had a conversation with Jesus. Hmm. See, this is another thing that disturbed me with this because you got some people thinking, especially in the Christian realm or churchgoers or believers in Christ, whatever you call yourself, you got some people thinking unclean spirits don't have power. Unclean spirits don't have intelligence. No, understand this. 
Unclean spirits have personalities. They have intelligence. They have set up camp inside the bodies of people. See, sometimes you got to distinguish, is this this person or is this the spirit that's operating in this person? See, sometimes we like, oh, I just can't stand them. I don't like them. But is it them you don't like or is it the spirit, that unclean spirit that's in them? See, unclean spirits have personalities. Unclean spirits can be very messy. They can be very petty. They can just do all sorts of things within a person. And remember, some people are open vessels. They're easy for unclean spirits to get camp up in. Also, you have to be aware of the people that come into your lives. Sometimes people come into your lives to pray, P-R-E-Y, pray upon you because you're distracted with other things. So you are an easy target for them. Don't miss what I'm saying. You unclean spirits know how to present themselves as good people. Unclean spirits know how to present themselves as friends. Unclean spirits will ease up on you and pretend that they can be a victim of something. And when they get up in your feelings to make you become empathetic to what they're going through, and they got you. Because now they've touched a part of your heart. Because you know what? Unclean spirits recognize good people. And some of you have have allowed people with unclean spirits or with ulterior motives to enter your lives. And you better get yourself back focused because you're too distracted and you can't see what this unclean spirit, this unclean person, the spirit operating within this person is doing. The one of the first thing the unclean spirit wants to do is remove people out of the way who is a threat to them? What you talking about, Pastor KZ? An unclean spirit recognizes the weak ones and the strong ones. What the unclean spirit does is he get in the ear of the weak one who's distracted and began to talk against whether it's their friend, their family, the husband or the wife, because they got to get them out of the way. Because see, you know what they're doing? The person that you're involved with are your mama, your daddy, your wife, husband, your best friends, what have you. See, they can recognize through the spirit of discernment. Somebody in your circle is going to recognize something in that personality trait of that unclean spirit that's trying to weasel their way into your life and start blocking things that you God has for you. And that evil spirit, an unclean spirit, recognizes that. So they have got to talk to you against that person so they can get out of the way. See, but you got to understand you have got to use the Holy Spirit that's operating within you and take authority and override any assignment sent your way. See, in this particular gospel, Mark in particular, he is emphasizing that the people were drawn to Jesus. Not because Jesus was preaching or teaching anything different than what the other people were preaching and teaching, but they were drawn to Jesus because Jesus exhibited authority over unclean spirits. He had the anointing and he had authority. And when Jesus spoke with authority, the evil spirits and the unclean spirits had to come under his submission. Can anybody understand where I'm going with this today? See, the devil is aware of your level of anointing, and he is also aware of your level of taking authority. See, how, do, how does the devil recognize this? How does the unclean spirits recognize this, Pastor? He recognizes it by the way you come into a room. Uh, I, I, I just lost somebody right there. The unclean spirits, the enemy, the devil, whatever you want to call him, recognizes your authority and your anointing by the way you enter a room. They can see something is different about you. They already know that you have authority. And notice here, the unclean spirits 
didn't really care about the man. See, this is what you got to understand. When those spirits take possession of an individual, they don't care about the person. The unclean spirits would have killed the man eventually. So he was he was just collateral damage in all of this. All the evil and unclean spirits wanted to do was keep that individual in bondage. See, that's what the assignment of the enemies is. It's designed to keep you down, to keep you discouraged, keep you frustrated, keep you broke, keep you in poor health. But I want to tell somebody today watching this video, you have authority. Take back authority. Take back your life. Take back your family. You've got to speak with authority. You've got to enter a room with authority. But more importantly, you've got to have the anointing on you to even operate with authority. See, there's a lot of people that's gifted. But everybody don't have the anointing. There's a lot of people that are in supervisory positions that like to micromanage you. Those people don't really have authority, so they have to manufacture confidence. But when you got the Holy Spirit reigning and living within you, you can operate in your gift and the anointing will override it. And when you speak, there's authority. You see something different about you. So Jesus wasn't teaching anything different. Those other priests, those other pastors was preaching some of the same sermons, but they didn't have the anointing. They didn't have the power behind it. And they certainly did not speak with the authority. Oh, I'm getting excited here. See, the assignments of the enemy is to diminish you. The assignment of the unclean spirits and the enemy is to take possession of you, to lead you to not to believe in what you see. How, what you talking about, Pastor? Slow that down. There are some people that come into your life and they're predators and they come into your life. And even though you know the sky is blue, they can convince you otherwise. Well, it's not really blue. What you're seeing is a different hue. They really good with their words and they can, can get you mixed up. So I want to ask you something today. Do you have authority? Do you operate in authority when you speak? Do you conduct yourself with the anointing and the authority, your God-given right to subdue, to bring under submission the enemy when the enemy attacks you? Or, or are you so blind you can't even recognize the enemy when he slithers into your life? Yeah, I said it. Sometimes the enemy slithers in. And before you know it, he's done moved into your house. Okay. Nobody wanted to hear that right then. See, let me say this to you. If the unclean spirit in this scripture was bold enough to talk to Jesus, step up to Jesus and have a conversation with him, you don't think he's bold enough to come to you? Hmm. See, you got to understand something. The enemy went to church went into the house of worship. Now, something puzzled me with that. And I asked myself this question. And I want you to ask yourself the same question. Why would a man possessed with an unclean spirit be interested in going to church? Why? Because as I always tell people, the church is a hospital. It's a lot of sick people in the church. Mm. So what better place for the enemy to come into is in the church. Now, that wasn't the first time that spirit had walked up in that church. It said unclean spirits. They had been there before, and they sized everybody in there up. I ain't going to say here a word from you right now, but I'm going to speak this to five people watching this today. The enemy has already sized you up. Somebody can fist pound me from the, from their house. You can high five me right there. The enemy has already watched you. The enemy has sized you up. He know where you weak and he know where you strong. And he knows when you distracted. And that makes you an easy mark. You're an easy target. And then the enemy, let me show you what else he does. He began to put things in your mind that's not even there. You begin to look at things different because the enemy is in your ear telling you things. This person not good for you. You got to get them out. They jealous of you. They envious of you. 
Now, this is a person been on your ride or die forever and a day. And now the enemy trying to put these things in your mind to get that person out of the way. I ain't going to get no help in here. So when the unclean spirit was went to church, he had sized everybody in there up. He knew the weak ones. He knew the anointed ones. He knew the ones who was playing church. He knew the ones who just show up to church just because they want to dress up. He knew everybody in there. And he that was his opportunity to pray on somebody. Easy targets will sit up in church every Sunday. Why is that, Pastor K? Because everybody who attend church, some people are, are not filled with the Holy Spirit. Some people don't have the spirit of discernment. In some churches, they're babes in Christ. So what do you do? You pray on the weak ones. You pray on the new Christians. You pray on the new converts. You pray on the people who are vulnerable. The, the, you know what the most interesting part of worship service for unclean spirits? Two, two components. Praise and worship and altar call. Not when the pastor preaching. Not when the choir singing or the praise team singing. Praise and worship. You know what the unclean spirits and the enemy is doing? His eyes is roaming all around the sanctuary. He's seeing the praisers. He's seeing the ones who are just sitting there. He sees the ones that lift their hands and start saying amen. He's watching the praisers. And then he's watching the ones that get up. When the pastor calls for altar, altar prayer, anybody want some special prayer? Anybody want to speak some special prayer, some, some praise reports? He's sitting there watching who gets up and go to that altar every Sunday. He already knows, okay, this one, I got this one. She's at the altar every Sunday with the same situation. Oh, wait, this is a new person here. I ain't never seen her go up to the altar. Let's hear what she got to tell the pastor. He's listening. When she up there spilling her guts, just pray for me, pray for my son, or pray for me and my husband, we going through situation. Now he's sitting there, so he already done tore up your house. So you up in the church talking about it, and you got the unclean spirit sitting up in there like, yeah, let's do this, let's keep messing with her. We don't have her quite yet, because she's still trusting in the Lord. Let's, let's mess with her a little bit more. So the unclean spirits want to be a disruption. Want to, want to find fault, want to criticize. Importantly, like I said, they go to church because there's easy targets there. People whose faith may not be as strong. People who give up on God when things get tough. People who go to church and they get distracted real easy. Let me say this about unclean spirit. Unclean spirits hate prayers. They don't like it when you pray. They don't like it when you walk by faith and not by sight. The unclean spirits don't like it when you praise and worship God. The unclean spirits do not like when you have the spirit of discernment operating and you can call them out, when you can put them under your feet, when you can bring them into submission, when you use your God-given authority and say, devil, get out of my house, get off of my body, leave my health alone, get out of my finances. You start speaking with authority and that shakes the enemy up. Mm. You got to understand no matter how much you pray and how much you speak, the, the enemy knows when you're not speaking with authority. There's some people, it's a difference between, Lord, I just want to thank you. I believe you're going to do it. And then like, the, the unclean spirits and the enemies is like, she don't really believe it. She don't really mean it. But when you say, Lord, I'm going to trust you. When you start speaking like Job did, when you start speaking like he say, I'm going to stay right here and wait till my change come, Lord. I'm going to trust you to deliver me. I'm going to trust you to heal me. I'm not going to give up on you no matter what I go through in spite of my circumstances. I'm going to wait on you, Lord, because I believe that you can do it. The same way when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego went in that fiery furnace and they he told the king, Oh, king, live forever. But if God don't bring us out, it's not because he can't. We're going to trust him. When Daniel was in that lion's den, isn't it ironic that when Daniel got in that lion's den, he didn't fear. He walked up in there and he had so much authority and anointing on him, the lion went to sleep. 
I better stop y'all. If you sick and tired of the devil messing with you, if you sick and tired of the enemy messing with you, you better get up and speak with authority. Your prayers need to be prayers made with authority. Pray with expectation. Pray that I believe God, you're going to turn this situation around. You're going to overturn this. You're going to reclaim your children. You're going to reclaim your community. You're going to reclaim your health. In spite of what the medical reports say, it doesn't matter what your diagnosis is. I have seen God heal people of cancer. God has healed lupus. God has brought people back off their sick bed who people gave up on. Now somebody's thinking, Pastor K, but why my mama died? Why my daddy died? Why my uncle died? Because, honey, according to the word of God, we did not come here to stay here. We all have an expiration date. We just don't know when it is. But the point is, be ready when he come. Have your soul right when he come. Live your life so that when that day come and your name is called, have your soul right and be ready to go. Because when you go to that cemetery, that's not the end. That is not the end because one day we all going to stand before him. And today I'm telling somebody, reclaim your family. Reclaim your inheritance. Get down on your knees and declare that I will not give up. Things are going to turn around for me. Things going to turn around in this family. Things going to turn around in this house. I speak victory over my family. I speak victory over myself. Finances will increase. My health will increase. Oh, I better stop, y'all. I better save something for, for worship service today. You've got to take back authority. You've got to stop being weak need Christians stumbling stumbling down there crying on the altar. Lord, I don't know when you coming. No, Lord, I believe you're coming. When the, uh, even amongst the tears, Lord, I need your help and in your word. You say all I got to do is ask you. I don't have to beg you. Lord, I expect for you to come and turn this around. You got to speak with authority because when you speak with authority, not only do you subdue and bring into submission any unclean spirits, but you are getting God's attention now because he hear you up there. And when you speak it and you speak it in his son's name, when you say in the name of Jesus, see, Jesus is our mediator. He's, he's standing in the middle right there. He, that's mediation. When you speak it in his name and when you say, Lord, cover me with your blood, you done got the attention of heaven now. And don't you know God is moving right now. God is turning some things around for you right now that you don't even see. I challenge you today, speak with authority. Speak with authority and believe that a turnaround is coming. You all be blessed and may keep keep praying. Keep praying. Don't give up. Don't give up. Have your cry and pick yourself up and start speaking over that situation. Start speaking over your enemy. Start speaking over your family. Start speaking over your household. Don't give up. No matter what comes your way, don't give up. Thank you all for watching. May the Lord bless you and may heaven smile upon you. And this has been the All About Favor Word for today. I will see you back on tomorrow for Sports Wrap Up. Be blessed always. Always stay focused, stay favored, and, and keep your eyes open for the enemy. Don't let him pray on you. Don't let him pray on you. You have authority. Have a wonderful day.